breaking news right now at 530. Florida State University is suspending all fraternities and sororities after the alcohol related death of this student, Andrew Coffey. The freshman pledge at Pi Kappa Phi died Friday following a party. Prosecutors say the footage from the basement of the Beta Theta Pi house shows fraternity brothers giving the 19-year-old pledge at least 18 drinks of beer, wine, and vodka, all in just an hour and 22 minutes. It's awful how of, of how much of a coordinated effort that, that this crew kind of took upon themselves to, to get Tim and these other pledges so drunk. Syracuse University suspended Theta Tau fraternity indefinitely after this video surfaced online. Do you know what you signed up for today? Large parts of it too offensive to show on TV. Over the last few decades, stories like these have surfaced to the public eye, prompting many to question the establishment of Greek organizations on college campuses. But how has the country come to accept organizations like this, and why do we subconsciously accept their deplorable behavior? The first Greek letter organization began with Phi Beta Kappa at the College of William and Mary, and this began the collective flood of Greek organizations that swept college campuses across the country. Originally, the organizations used their letters to symbolize what their organization stood for. Nowadays, many still practice this, but the public has a very different perspective on what the letters stand for. There are stereotypes surrounding their social habits and their attitude towards minority groups. Some even go as far to say that the members are essentially paying for their friends. To set some of the stereotypes straight, I sat down with a few Greek members on Mercer's campus and asked their thoughts on the public's view in Greek life, as well as their experiences being a part of a Greek organization. I think that Greek life is made into something that is like really kind of like negative in the way that it like promotes bullying and it promotes like talking down to people that promotes hazing and that's not really what happens here so I think the, the general like public opinion is skewed a little bit because of the way that movies portray it and the way that like people who do have bad experiences portray it uh, I know that my parents before I rushed for fraternity were like well we've seen the news we've seen the movies all they do is drink all they do is party some of them are criminals, they get charged with felonies. Nationally, if you're not affiliated, if you don't know uh, anything about Greek life and all you can base it off of is news stories, then you're not going to have the greatest opinion. And as unfortunate as that is, I feel like that does uh, represent a decent portion of people in the country. So they've obviously heard the stereotypes. So what about the stereotypes do they think are misleading? The bad experiences get brought to light more than the good experiences. Like in the media you'll hear more about like the two girls that had a horrible experience in recruitment and like being a new member and stuff like that than you would the 20 girls who had a fantastic experience and you know continued to do great things through their sisterhood. I'm not going to say the news exclusively focuses on negatives that is probably about to spitball a number around 90% of why a Greek organization would get put in the news uh, would be for things like hazing stories or uh, the, the one story on racism. Could the media be lumping Greek life into a box? The negative stories, while they are horrible, don't really tell the whole story of Greek life. I think that hazing does happen. I don't think that it happens in the way that movies make it seem like. I don't think that it's as frequent as people think it is for Sorority sisters make you stand up against a wall and circle parts of your body you need to work on. I think that probably does happen, but I don't think it happens as often as people say it does. As far as like peer pressure goes, I definitely think that happens not because of like the sisters meaning for it to happen, but like it's really easy to give in to peer pressure when the girls in your pledge class are saying, oh yeah, I would definitely do that, and you're the only one saying, hmm, like it's a little, peer pressure is one of those things that like, it is hazing, but it's also like you're going to go through peer pressure even if you're not in Greek life. Like you can make that decision sitting in your dorm room. All of your friends are saying, oh yeah, let's go party tonight. And like you're the only one sitting there saying, I don't want to drink. That's not necessarily something that happened. You don't have to be Greek to go through peer pressure. So I think that that's kind of something that gets way overblown because peer pressure happens everywhere. Peer pressure happens in Greek life, it happens in athletes, it happens in school, 
It just happens in friend groups. It just something that is what it is. Despite what the stereotypes might lead you to believe, Greek organizations aren't the only ones that can get into trouble. Many other students on campus can participate in the party lifestyle and don't have to be Greek. In terms of Greek life, they are the martyr for the bad, but there's a second side to them that many don't recognize. I guess the ratios, just the general stereotype, yeah, there are bad people in Greek life, there are bad people in countries, there's bad people everywhere. Um, and yet for every one bad, there's at least 10 good. So I think that's my thing that I wish people wouldn't get misconstrued, is that while there is bad, there is so much good that people don't truly realize. Many organizations aren't just about the bad that is portrayed by headlining media stories. Most of the organizations often spend their weekends giving back to their community instead of using it to better their social life. I know some organizations have made uh, local or national news for their incredible philanthropies. Um, and yet a lot of the times they are so small scale that they do kind of get glossed over by the news unless it's local and we just can't see it. We're not who Psych thinks we are, we're more than that. We are leaders, you know, we are encouragers, we're inspiring young men, you know, looking to make a difference in the world. Take Maggie's organization, Alpha Gamma Delta, for example. So Alpha Gam is really big into like philanthropy. And so through Alpha Gam, I've done a lot of things in the community with like um, putting together lunches for children that might not have food on the weekends. And it's kind of got me, gotten me more involved around campus just by way of like introducing me to people and like making me aware of the different organizations that are on campus. So I think that it's kind of given me something that I wouldn't have had had I not gone through Greek life because I wouldn't be, honestly, I don't think I'd leave the music school. Along with interacting with and bettering the community around them, members also get personal benefits that aren't as short term as campus popularity. A lot of participants gain a lifelong support group who will drop anything just to help each other out. It is a sisterhood, it is a brotherhood, it is a group of people that you can be around all the time and they're always there to support you. That's my experience with it. I've never called a sister and had her say, sorry I can't help you right now, I've got this going on or this going on. They've all immediately jumped to it and been like, yeah, I can help you, what do you need? Can I, do you want me to come get you? Can I drive you somewhere? It's never been a situation where they were like, mm, you're not pretty enough for me to help you, sorry. Others learn valuable life skills and learn life lessons from other members. For me personally, I feel like I've had a lot of, a lot of development, uh, a lot of maturity because of my roles in Greek life. Um, I entered as a regular member and through the process learned time management fantastically, uh, how to hold more formal conversations with uh, women and men older than myself, more professional conversations that could be applied to applying for jobs or grad school. I served as an executive officer, so I was able to develop leadership skills as well, um, which I feel will greatly help me. I've, I've put my experiences I've learned in Greek life on my application for medical school already. Uh, before I went Greek in high school, I was never really a leader. I was the shy, quiet type didn't see myself in a leadership position, didn't see myself standing on the podium, you know, inspiring people. But, you know, when I came to Mercer and I joined Greek Life, I was surrounded by all of these people that were like me and unlike me in a sense that they were leaders their whole life. And I learned from them, you know, I was surrounded by them. Just common saying, you know, you're gonna be the person who you surround yourself with. And I was surrounded by leaders, surrounded by, you know, people who are looking to make a positive impact in the world. So when it comes to the negatives surrounding Greek life, I asked what they would say to those whose actions drag down the organizations across the country. Why treat it like a social club when it's in actuality so much more? Um, it's, it's a series of Greek letters, but it's more than that. It's a system of beliefs and ideals. If you're in a Greek organization, you can talk to your chapter officers or your national headquarters and be reminded of what those are and just check, cross-check yourself, all your friends. Are you truly upholding these great ideals that these organizations set forth? If not, you should probably do something to change that. 
extremely bad incidents and some irresponsible representatives have given Greek life the face it has now. But what can the members do to repair the face of Greek life? I don't think there's a quick fix. You can't, we can't undo in like five or ten years what has been happening since the beginning of Greek life. That's just not feasible. It's going to be something that happens over time. And I think that it's going to have to be really a decision on Greek life's part to really put out there, no, we don't haze as much as you think we do. And honestly, if they do haze, they're going to have to stop hazing. Like it's going to have to be an effort from all Greek life that just we unanimously decide we're not going to haze anymore because we don't want this to be the stigma of Greek life. We want Greek life to get better. So we have to stop the things that have happened in the past that made it look bad. So I think that it can be fixed, but I think that enough people have to get together and say, we want to fix this. In the end, the only way to prevent another hazing death or hate crime case is to call it out when you see it. It is on us to recognize when behavior is unacceptable. Being a bystander is just as bad as being a perpetrator. So next time you see something that is putting others in danger, speak up. Call them out on their actions and work towards making the college experience safer for everyone, regardless of their affiliation to Greek organizations.